Good morning, fellow privateers. Hope everyone had a nice weekend and good week trading last week. Definitely getting in this in the summer doldrums, but you know, we've got uh, another week of central bank meetings coming up. We'll, so we'll talk about a little bit about um, the event risk coming up this week. We are approaching the end of July. And uh, you're going to see a lot of skeleton staff going on in, uh, in the trading rooms across the globe. So <clears throat> why don't we start out with some of the, the macro economic event risk coming up, and then we'll get to the charts. I've got the Euro stocky chart all primed up there for you. Um, you know, so this week we obviously have the FOMC, the much-awaited, long-awaited FOMC. And, you know, it seems like the Fed officials have done a good job of making a case for a 25 basis point cut. Um, the important thing really is the, for one, we don't think the 50 basis point is going to happen. Um, it's really all about the statement of the press conference. You know, on Friday, we have the jobs number. If we have another strong jobs number, um, you know, I, I would say that they might be uh, one and done, at least in the next few months, leading up to the next meeting, which would be in September. Um, so, you know, we're thinking that um, if it is an inch, you know, if they, they go ahead in the press conference and they talk about, this is not the start of an easing cycle. This is an insurance cut. Um, it's not an open-ended accommodation. Um, we think that you're actually going to see a, a move higher in U.S. rates, U.S. yields. Um, can't imagine they would come across super dovish. Um, it'll make it look like they're giving in to Trump and all of his uh, the pressure that he's put on Powell and the team. So that, you know, that's probably the, the, the big, the big event. And that's on Wednesday. Um, U.S. equities had a great week. They actually made new all time closing weekly and daily highs. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, what else do we have? We've got, uh, we talked about the, non-farm payrolls number, um, you know, regardless of the previous month's strong number, that I don't think that's going to have any impact on the Fed's decision of cutting 25 basis points this week. Uh, we have ISM. That's pretty important. There's been a rebound in the Empire Manufacturing in the Philly. Um, so there's it's potential that this ISM starts putting in a uh, – maybe putting in a bottom uh, before the next leg lower. So I would keep a close eye on that ISM number. Um, where was it last? I think it was, uh, I can't even read this. 52 was last for the ISM manufacturing number. Um, we do have a, a bunch of global PMI data, including China, which is a little bit later in the week. We've got GDP prints out of Europe, Sweden, Italy, and we have the Australian uh, second quarter CPI. That'll be important uh, for the um, RBA's next uh, next move, which we think will be a cut. Um, we also have the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan. Um, you know, cable got hit pretty hard of late looking a bit oversold. Uh, one of our coverage guys is talking about it might be time to take some of these sterling shorts back. Um, just, I think it's, you know, ma mainly on the technical, just very oversold, and the risk is, is probably for a little bit of a squeeze higher, maybe 150 points higher. Um, the Bank of England, speaking of cable, um, well, let's just touch on the ECB. So the ECB meeting was last week, and we had a bunch of really 
ugly data points coming out of uh, Germany. It's, it certainly looks like they're heading towards recession. Um, you know, so I think that um, you know selling euro is still a pretty good, pretty good bet, even though it's pretty much in this range. But uh, we'll see if we can break out. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we do get a break and a sustainable move lower in the euro into August when pretty much everyone's on holiday, uh, including me, starting later this week. Um, and then, so the Bank of England, uh, Barclays, I think it was Barclays that I was reading, wrote that the August meeting is likely to gain traction with the publication of the quarterly inflation report, and policy is widely expected to remain on change. Uh, the market is looking for any shift in rhetoric with recent MPC communication turning a bit more balanced. Um, that's Saunders, I believe, is the hawk, the lone hawk. Uh, the other members are, you know, worried about a weakening outlook. Expect a wait and see approach with a slightly dovish stance. Um, Bank of Japan. Well, they're in a pretty, pretty tough situation here. Uh, they don't have much left that they could do, aside from Kuroda jawboning, you know, dovishness. Um, they really don't want to see the yen appreciate, and uh, you know, their inflation targeting would come under some stress if uh, you get a, a big appreciation. So any, any kind of risk-off move in, say, global equities that would lead to a Strengthening Japanese yen would would make their situation extremely uh, complicated. Um, what else do we have? We've got. Um, I think we highlighted all the important all the important uh, macroeconomic data. I'm just scrolling through the calendar here now. Uh, oh, just a reminder: we do we do have the. Um, we do have the manufacturing PMI out of China. So we'll see what kind of shape they're in. Uh, why don't we hop over to the charts? Uh, I've got this Euro Swedish. Um, probably not a lot of you are uh, trading this currency, but I, I saw the weekly. It was an interesting uh, bullish engulfing week. Um, we can take a look at the daily. Closing above kind of my some of my moving averages, you know, we've been in a, a pretty nice downtrend since uh, was it mid May. Looks to be bottoming. This is huge support now down here. This whole 1048 area. Um, so as long as we stay above there, this looks like I could see us retracing. You know, maybe to this old high, 1071. Um, one of the commentators was talking about. Um, they're worried about the the data surprises out of Sweden. Sweden they have deteriorated more more than any of the other um, more of the other you know um, G20 currencies or G20 countries, and um, they're turning increasingly bearish on the Swedish krone. Um, but we'll wait for the GDP. Um, numbers that come out on uh, Tuesday, my time. So that's zero stocky. We'll go through the majors now. There's Aussie dollar, you know, rejected up here near 71 cents, and it's been down one, two, three, four, five, six straight days down, a new low daily close that we've seen in a while. Uh, I don't see why this can't continue down to this, this old important fractal low, which is 68.30. Uh, Euro dollar. We had this little bullish looking bottoming potential, you know, blow off bottom type bar on uh, Thursday, but then the downtrend resumed. And, uh, you know, from what I'm reading, you know, we, we did make a marginal new low last week, just above 111. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Yeah, so it's the lowest weekly close we've seen in a really long time. I mean, we're talking about, we're going back to, you know, 
uh, somewhere, where is that, Seven, 2017. So, you know, there's been so many head fakes, as you can see, it's tightened up. I mean, even look at the, look at the, the weekly ATR is just in the seller right now to 138 pips, I think that was. Um, you know, there's the daily ATR trending down. Again, if if it, if this thing's going to break out, it won't at all surprise us if it happens in August, when you know very little liquidity, and there won't be anyone on this trade. I would imagine that you know the the way this has sold off the past few days, like the past week, week and a half, seems to me that not a lot of people have this position on. Maybe they started building a bit last week into the ECB meeting. Um, but that's generally how things work. British pound closed, definitely getting oversold um, on some of our metrics. However, I mean, it's the lowest daily close we've seen. Let's see where I can go here with the dailies. I mean, lowest daily close since, wow. I mean, that goes all the way back to December 2018. So that looks pretty. Uh, it looks pretty bearish. Uh, again, one of the one of our one of the banks that we that we follow is saying that the it's quite oversold and the you know the positioning is starting to become a bit extreme in British pound. But I'm not touching this thing. I mean, we can, I don't see why we can't just go down to like 120 or something for shits and grins. Um, Kiwi dollar does not perform well in the month of August. Uh, on the seasonality, I believe we touched on that last week. So again, this is looks very similar to the Aussie chart. We had, you know, one, two, five of the last six days or decent red down days. Um, yeah, so I could see this, you know, retesting these old lows down around 65 cents. Um, dollar CAD, here's another positioning one. The long CAD positioning, I guess, is getting a bit extreme. And they're saying they're, they're cautious. However, if I look at that daily. Look at that daily bar here with a uh, kind of panic up to 132, 131.98. Closed on change on the day. Let's see what that weekly looks like. You know, so dollar CAD, I could see that. You know, it looks like it might be bottoming. Um, take a look at dollar yen, and then we'll get over to the some of the other uh, equity indices. There's a dollar yen weekly, decent up week, just broad dollar strength. Uh, indecisive day on Friday. You know, I could see it maybe testing 109, but this looks kind of rangy. I guess if we take out this 109 area, which is an old low and that recent daily high, we could continue higher. Um, let's pop over to uh, the S&Ps. Talked about this earlier. Take a look at the weekly. It's a new high weekly close, all time. New high daily close. Um, not fighting it. I'm waiting for. I really want. We we were talking about this 2970. If 2970 breaks, I think it's going to be a swift move down. But until then, I'm not even touching this. Uh, we'll look for. We'll watch this on the daily though. Nasdaq. We need that similar level as 7790. Um, again, not touching that. Here's the DAX. Had that big down day on Thursday. Really ugly looking. Um, I would imagine this stays under pressure, just the weakening of the German economy and a lot of people calling for a recession this year out of Germany. I could see that. There's a FTSE that had a decent week. Um, take a look at U.S. 10-year yields. You know, didn't do much. Um, let's see what the weekly looks like. You know, slightly higher week after the previous down week. But that was that that week was inside. This week's slightly outside. Still positioned for a move to kind of 220, 
225 area um, but I just it's just been kind of stale I've, I've had this position on now for a couple weeks it's not doing anything 30-year yields look similar um, WTI on the week that do had the big down week from 61 the previous week and then this is like this is one of the narrowest ranges we've seen in crude in a long time didn't do anything um, gold and silver uh, there's the weekly inside week in gold not much going on silver looks better we're long that still bought that last week and uh, copper copper which would be a, a good good leading indicator of uh, global growth inside ish week but a down week here's an okay trend line actually off that low uh, you know maybe a break of that in this uh, I think it's a 200 week moving average they're not too far apart so watch that for you know if you start seeing more recession recessionary data globally uh, copper will be leading the way um, what else we got I just want to make sure I've got everything covered on the data front I believe I do um, you know Wednesday's the big day with the FOMC and where is that and then you know the Bank of England, Bank of Japan, and then it all gets down to the non-farm payrolls. Actually, we have payrolls. We got the trade balance of the U.S. on Friday, Michigan sentiment and factory orders. So Monday, looking pretty quiet on the data front, and then it starts to pick up <coughs> as we get into Tuesday through the rest of the week. So keep your powder dry early in the week. I think there'll be some fireworks. Liquidity is going to be really, really bad. Um, again, the summer holidays before the kids get back to school and sports start in the U.S. You know, everything starts up in a couple of weeks, so this is the time when people are away. So you got to keep it super nimble and uh, you know don't have too strong an opinion because I'm not sure how much follow through you get. But the one thing I am looking at is if this euro dollar starts taking out 111 it could be a swift move down to 109 which would uh, which could would catch everyone by surprise because I just don't think they have it I'm just looking at the positioning now in the euro um, yeah I mean no one's got it and uh, oh you know what let's, let's let's take a look at dollar China real quick I listened to some interview. A guy thinks one of these days Dollar China is just going to open up. There's going to be news out over the weekend where they devalue the currency and it's going to open up at. Uh, look at here's Dollar China Weekly. It's done nothing. It's completely, you know, Bank of China is probably on both sides. Here's the daily. Just dead. Vols just absolutely smoked. Look at the ATR. Crushed. I mean, that is crazy how tight that range is. That could be as tight as it's been I don't know in years I, I would think but anyhow so the, the, this interview I listened to he, he was saying that he wouldn't be surprised at, you know at some point this year you know if you do get some broad dollar strength it's gonna be hard to keep dollar China capped at seven and it could be one of these one-off currency devals where you know you wake up on the Monday and it opens up at nine which would be uh, that would cause a lot of a lot of problems with with the risk assets. So no real strong views. Um, you know, stay nimble this week, and uh, you know, I hope many of you are planning on taking some time off. It's a good good time of year to do it, and you know, we'll be back in the saddle in uh, a couple weeks' time. I'll probably be putting out a video next Sunday 
and the European Open videos will be, uh, you'll have some, I think, this week, and then after that, there's probably a week and a half break. So, obvi obviously, if something, if the shit's hitting the fan, we'll, we'll be updating you on Twitter. All right, well, good luck this week, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. All the best. Cheers.